Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Hey gang, and welcome back. We have another super game lined up just for your viewing pleasure. Mike is playing his Mirko Voss deck, keeping Watery Grave, Swamp, Island, Liliana's Reaver, Dream Fracture, Drana, Liberator of Malakir, and Sword of the Animist. Trevor is playing Crufix, keeping a forest, two islands, Sylvan Library, and a mana drain. I am still hammering out the kinks in my Mistform Ultimus deck, and I keep two islands, a Soul Ring, a Mind Stone, a Meboid Changeling, Inundate, and Supreme Phantom. Lastly, Matt is testing out his new Tesa Karlov deck, keeping Yeheni, Pawn of Ulamog, Cryptcast, Anguish Unmaking, Solemn Simulacrum, Swamp, and a Plains. Trevor wins the die roll and starts us off. Trevor plays an island, passing. Matt plays a swamp and passes. Mike plays a tapped watery grave and passes to me. I play a tapped myriad landscape and pass to Trevor. Trevor plays a forest and he casts Sylvan Library. Matt plays a plains and passes. Mike plays an Esper Panorama, cracking it at the end of his turn to go and find a relevant basic. I play an island, and I cast Soul Ring. I then use the Soul Ring to crack my Myriad Landscape, and go to find two islands, passing to Trevor. Trevor uses his library trigger, but doesn't keep any extras. He plays an island, and passes. Matt plays a Command Tower, and he casts Pawn of Ulamog. Mike plays a Swamp, and he casts Drana, passing to me. I play an island, and I cast Supreme Phantom. I then cast Misform Ultimus, which Trevor counters with his foily mana drain. Trevor takes 4 to keep an extra card with his library trigger, and plays a Yavimaya Hollow. Using his floating mana for mana drain, Trevor is easily able to cast a World Breaker, who on cast, exiles my Soul Ring. I'm pretty salty, but Trevor tries to justify the move as there being no other legal targets. Right. Matt plays a Phyrexian Tower as his land for turn, and he casts Yeheni and passes to Mike. Mike plays an island, and he casts Sword of the Animist. He equips it onto Drana and swings her at Matt. Mike gets to go and find a basic first, and Matt then takes three. With Matt taking three from Drana, all of Mike's creatures, aka Drana, get a plus one plus one counter. I play an island, and I cast Mindstone. I then cast Rhystic Study, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor uses his library, and he keeps no extra cards. He plays a Thespian Stage, and casts Crufix. Matt plays a Plains, and pays 4 to cast Tesa Karlov. He sacrifices the pawn to the tower, gaining 2 black mana, but also 2 death triggers, which in this case means 2 Eldrazi spawn tokens. Matt then sacrifices the spawns to go with a black mana, and he pays for Solemn Simulacrum to go and find a basic. He doesn't pay 1 for it, and I draw a card, which makes me realize I missed a few before. Mike plays a Felwar Stone and pays the 1 for it. He then swings Drown at me for 4, and gets to find a basic before combat damage is dealt. I take the hit, and Drana gives herself another counter when she connects. I draw for turn, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor takes another 4 to keep an extra card, and he plays a Strip Mine. He then casts Search for Escanta, paying the 1, and passes to Matt. Matt plays a Swamp, and sacrifices the Solemn to Phyrexian Tower for 2 black mana. He gets to draw 2 cards from the Solemn Dying, and I'm kind of jealous. Matt then casts a Cryptgast, and doesn't pay 1 for it, letting me draw. Mike draws for turn, and swings Drana at Matt. Mike goes to grab an island from the Sword Trigger, and responding at the end of the Declare Attacker step, Matt flashes in Dictate of Erebos, but Mike counters it with a Dream Fracture. Mike and Matt draw a card, and since I'm narrating it after the fact, I now realize I've missed a bunch of cards as well. And as you can tell, my New Year's resolution is going very well. Mike then plays an island for his turn, and he plays a Shadow Mage Infiltrator. He doesn't pay one, and thank goodness I remember to draw one card, before he passes turn. I draw for turn, and pass, discarding Adaptive Automaton at the end of my turn. Also, Trevor has his stage become a copy of a forest at the end of my turn, having too many colorless sources for his liking. Trevor uses his search trigger to bin a card off the top, and uses his library trigger again. He only keeps one, and plays a Sanctum of Ugin before passing to Matt. Matt plays a Ghost Quarters land for turn, and we see a Divine Visitation hit Matt's side of the field. 
Trevor's not a fan of this, and Matt passes anyway. Mike casts Elbrus the Binding Blade, and Trevor counters it with a Plasm Capture. I fail to draw from both spells, and I might as well just pack up my stuff now. Mike then swings the Shadow Mage Infiltrator at Trevor for one, and draws as it connects, passing. I draw for turn, and I tap 4 mana to cast Curse of the Swine where X is 2. I target Trevor's Worldbreaker and Matt's Cryptcast. Matt sacrifices the gas to Yeheni, so only Trevor gets a piggy. At the end of my turn, Trevor floats 2 mana and keeps it on Crewfix. Trevor uses his Search Trigger again to keep the card on top, and takes 4 this time to draw 2 cards from the Library Trigger. He then gains 7 blue in his main phase from the Plasm Capture Delayed Trigger, and uses 2 of it to cast Lightning Greaves. He doesn't pay the 1 and I draw a card. Trevor then taps some lands, and uses it plus 7 floating to cast Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. His on-cast trigger blows up Mike's Drana, and not paying 1, Trevor lets me draw a card. Trevor then moves to equip the Greaves onto Ulamog, and Matt responds by casting Anguish Unmaking targeting Ulamog. Trevor still has enough mana to cast a Cryptic Command to counter Matt's spell and draw a card, but my Swan Song says no to that. Trevor's boots then get put onto the pig, and he passes to Matt. Matt plays a Swamp and casts Martial Coup where X is 4, gaining 4 Angel Tokens instead of tiny 1-1 soldiers. Matt then sacrifices one of the Angels to the tower to help pay for Twilight Drover, and he passes turn. Mike gears up his Shadow Mage with a sword and swings John Finkel at me for 2, while searching for a basic. He grabs a Swamp, and then draws a card when the wizard connects. I play an Island for my turn, and I cast Inundate, bouncing all non-blue creatures to their owner's hands. I then pass my turn. Trevor uses his search, and he bends Swiftfoot Boots. He then uses his library, and doesn't take any extra cards. With nothing else, he passes. Matt recasts Tasa in his main phase, and then Yeheni, passing. Naturally, I miss both triggers with Rhystic Study, because I'm talking to people around me and bad at magic. Mike casts a Scythe Claw in his main phase, and pays one for it to help me stop embarrassing myself. He swings a Shadow Mage Infiltrator at Trevor for two, finding a basic on Swing, and then drawing a card on Connecting. Mike then plays a Choked Estuary Tapped, and passes. I play an Island, and paint 6 cast Unesh. With the Sphinx on the stack, Trevor casts Factor Fiction, targeting me. He says I can make an empty pile if I want, but instead I make these. Trevor takes the piles with Hydroid Crassus, and I don't blame him. My Unesh then resolves, and I let Trevor make my piles, with one card less. I take the pile of three, and say bye bye to Mirage Mirror. I then cast Lightning Greaves, and put them onto my Sphinx, discarding down to seven at the end of my turn. Also, at the end of my turn, Trevor floats some mana, while Matt also takes the opportunity to cast Vampiric Tutor, and loses two to go put a card on top of his library. Trevor mills the top card with his search trigger, and this meets the requirement for the enchantment to flip into Ascanta the Sunken Ruin. Trevor then uses his library trigger, and keeps no extra cards. We then see Kozlik, Butcher of Truth, hit the stack. He doesn't pay one for it, so I get to draw a card, and then Trevor draws four cards from Kozlik's on task trigger. Trevor then plays a Hinterland Harbor as his land for turn, and puts the boots onto Kozlik. Moving to his combat step, Mike casts Sudden Spoiling, targeting Trevor to make Kozlik less of a threat, at least for this turn. Trevor then passes, and wants to let everyone know how much he dislikes effects that have your life, like Scythe Claw. Matt casts a Hangerback Walker in his main phase, where X is equal to 2. He then drops a Blasting Station, I have to wonder what he's up to. Also, I remember to draw from the Study Trigger finally. Matt then activates the Station, sacrificing the Hangerback Walker to deal 1 to the Germ Token attached to the Scythe Claw. Matt kills the Germ, and also gains 4 Angel Tokens, as they replace whatever the heck it is that Hangerback Walker makes. Mike draws, and moves the Scythe Claw into his Shadow Mage. He swings a Shadow Mage at Trevor, finding an island first, and then dealing 3, and then cutting Trevor's life total in half. And Mike then casts a Liliana's Reaver, paying 1 for it. I play an island for my turn, and I cast a Mera Regery. I then only need to pay 1 to cast a Mean Boy Changeling I've had in my hand since the beginning of the game, as is a Sphinx and a Merfolk. This means I get to untap an island I used to pay for it while it's on the stack, and then resolve a mini factor fiction once it resolves. I give Trevor the 4 to make the piles with, and I take the pile with Galecaster Colossus, and the Marrow Harbinger. I then cast a Lord of Atlantis, untapping an island as I cast it, and then a Master of Pearl Trident, also untapping an island as I cast it. 
I then cast Misform, whose command tax is reduced because of Munesh, untapping an island as I cast him, and then getting another mini Factor Fiction as he enters. I give the pile to Matt this time, and I take the pile without Psychonic Rift to the surprise of the table. I then move my Lightning Greaves onto the Misform, and swing him at Mike for 7 commander damage, none of which he can block because Misform has Island Walk. At the end of my turn, Trevor activates his Eskanta, and he keeps Kadama's reach. For his turn, Trevor uses his library once more, but doesn't keep any extra cards. Moving to combat, he swings Kozlik at me. I resolve the Annihilator trigger first, sacrificing my Mind Stone, Rhystic Study because let's face it it's not drawing many cards, an Island, and Supreme Phantom. I then block Kozlik with the Amy Boy Changeling, and with nothing else, Trevor passes. Matt recasts his Twilight Drover in his main phase, and he moves to combat. He swings his four Angel Tokens at me, who have Vigilance and Lifelink, and I take 16 while Matt gains the same. In his second main phase, Matt puts out an Anointed Procession, which isn't super nice, and he passes to Mike. Mike casts a Coastal Piracy in his main phase, and follows up with an Aqueous Form onto his Shadow Mage Infiltrator. With Mike moving to the beginning of his combat step, Matt uses Swords to Plowshares to exile the Shadow Mage, and Mike gains 3 life. Mike then moves to his second main phase, and he casts Castle Lord of the Fuge. I play a Cavern of Souls as my land for turn, naming Wizards. We then see a Hive Stone hit the field, and Trevor groans in dismay. This is then followed by a Shifting Sliver, which is just super duper for me, and I swing Misform at Matt for 6 commander damage. At the end of my turn, Trevor flashes in Jin Gataxis, which causes me to have to discard my hand as I pass to Trevor. Trevor uses his library trigger, and doesn't keep any extra. He plays a Misty Rainforest as a land for turn, and moving to combat, Trevor swings Kozlik at me again, and without even flinching, I bin 4 lands and block with Unesh. Trevor then ends his turn, and he draws 7 cards, passing to Matt. Matt plays a Plains, and passes to Mike, discarding his hand at the end of turn. Mike casts a Stolen Identity, and he targets his Gas Lord. With the spell in the stack, Trevor gets ahead of it by using a Reality Shift to exile the Gas Lord, and Mike manifests the top card of his library, fizzling the Stolen Identity. Mike then casts a Cloak of Mists on Liliana's Reaver to make it unblockable. We then see Obnixilus Reignited hit the field, and Mike upticks the Walker to draw a card and lose one life. He then plays a Command Towers as land for turn, and he moves to combat. The Reaver goes at Trevor, and before moving from Declare Attackers, Trevor uses Cross and Grip to blow up the Cloak of Mists. This lets him block with the Swan I gave him, and before leaving combat, Matt activates his Blasting Station to sacrifice an Angel and deal one to Jin. While the trigger's on the stack, Trevor flashes in Torrential Gear Hulk after cracking the Misty Rainforest to go and find a forest. Matt sacrifices another Angel to the Yeheni with the Torrential Gear Hulk on the stack, and the Drover gets two more counters on it with a token dying. He then activates the Drover's ability to make two Spirit Tokens, who become two more Angels. They come into play, which puts two more untapped triggers on the Blasting Station, and Matt is basically able to do this a few more times, sacking his Angels to put counters on the Drover, then making Spirits who become Angels with the Drover to untap the Station to tap the Station to do a bunch of damage and kill Jin. He goes through this whole cycle a few more times, and basically puts Trevor to one. The Gear Hulk then resolves, and Trevor flashes back the Crossing Grip to blow up Basting Station. Bear in mind, this was all during Mike's combat step, which he then moves from to a second main phase, in which he casts a Mirror Infiltrator, and he passes to me. Trevor makes a deal with me on my turn that if I don't finish him off, he won't go for me until I'm the last one alive, and we shake on it. Documented evidence, people. I then cast a Rite of Replication, making a copy of the Mirror Regery. Moving to combat, I swing everything at Matt for 24 points of damage, 7 of which is Commander. Trevor untaps, and can't keep an extra card from his library even if he wanted to. He moves to combat and swings Kozlik at Matt. Matt deals with the Annihilator trigger, sacrificing 3 lands and Tesa, and then blocks with an Angel token. We move to Trevor's second main phase, and he casts Ulamog the Infinite Hunger, who exiles on cast the Anointed Procession and Divine Visitation and with nothing else, he passes to Matt. Matt draws for turn, and he casts a Blood Artist. Trevor counters it with a free foil, discarding a Breeding Pool and Spell Sleeker. Matt then moves to combat, and kills Trevor with an Angel. Also, side note, we learn that the Angels from Divine Visitation have Vigilance. Hashtag learning. 
Mike plays an underground river as his land for turn, and he pays for the cost of his manifested creature to reveal a shimmy inspector. We then see a Prowler's Helm hit the field, and Mike equips it onto the Infiltrator, followed by the Scythe Claw. Mike then puts the Sword of the Animus onto his Reaver, and he swings everything at me. I take 10, dropping to 8, and then the Scythe Claw trigger happens and has my life drop me to 4. Mike also gets to draw 4 cards, and in his second main phase, Mike down takes Obnixilus to kill my Lord of the Atlantis because the white border upsets him. Mike then casts Dread Return to bring back his Drana, and he passes to me. I draw and realize I can either kill Matt and then die to Mike, or split my attack and hopefully live through the next step. I swing 3 creatures at Mike for 12, 6 of which is Commander, and 2 at Matt for 8. Matt also removes a counter from Drover to make some spirit tokens. I then play Scavenger Grounds in my second main phase as a way to hate people on my way out. Matt draws and sacrifices a spirit to the tower to help repay for Tessa. Matt then sends the remaining spirit and angel at me, dealing 5 damage and gaining 5 life at the same time as taking me out, and with nothing else he passes to Mike. Mike draws for turn and he upticks up Nixilus, losing 1 life to draw a card. Mike then swings the infiltrator and reaver at Matt, and he gets to go and find a basic with the reaver swinging. Matt blocks the reaver with his spirit, so even with the life gain from the spirit, Matt still loses 2 and then loses half of his life. In his second main phase, Mike plays a Bajuka Bog to exile Matt's graveyard, and he then casts a Lord of the Void, passing. Matt draws and casts a Reassembling Skeleton in his main phase. Matt then makes two more spirit tokens with the Drover, and moving to combat, he sacrifices one of the spirits to Yeheni to make them indestructible. Matt then swings everything at Mike, who has his trap card ready with a Polymorphous Jest. Mike then blocks the Drover who still has the counters on it with the Simeon Spectre who dies, but he's also easily able to block Tesa and Yeheni, killing them. Mike draws for turn and moves straight to combat by turning things sideways. Matt tries his best to block, but Mike goes to get a basic with a Swords trigger and is still able to get in for 3 with the Infiltrator, then halves Matt's life. Half of 1 rounded up is still 1, which has Matt die and Mike wins the game. Game review time. So I think I'm going to have to start cutting back on some of the generic lords. Supreme Phantom and Adaptive Automaton only pump Mistform and other creatures. They really don't do much else when compared to things like Master of the Pearl Trident or Lord of the Unreal. I also need to figure out a way to put some life gain in the deck, because once I get low, there's really no going back. Considering Trevor started with 5 cards in hand, he certainly did a good job of being a threat for most of the game with all of those giant Eldrazi's swinging at us with Annihilator triggers. At the same time though, I guess because he didn't have much of a hand, he wasn't really able to fight or defend for them very much, which is a lot of the reason they tended to die or get exiled. I think it's pretty crazy that Tesa Karlov, in addition to doubling death triggers, also gives tokens lifelink and vigilance. Speaking of Vigilance, Divine Visitation's Angels give Vigilance, what is up with that? That's literally a Sarah Angel. Could you imagine someone casting Secure the Waste with that? Oh my goodness, that'd be disgusting. And kudos to Mike for building a Demir deck that wasn't based around hard control. His theme for the deck was creatures that did something when they connected in combat damage, and he certainly did so. He played literally every single card he could that could have someone's life when it connected, which was super tilting for Trevor, and very hilarious. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.